This is RJ, my pet alligator, and a couple of my crew, Jay and Mike, have a crazy idea. You guys aren't even gonna believe this, so what are you trying to do? Take RJ on a walk. He's gonna try to take RJ, so let me just, let me just, okay. So you guys are gonna get RJ out. It, by the way, is it you, you or you? Or both of you? Him, I don't even know how I got talking into this. Okay. Again, us. So they're gonna get RJ out, take him up the stairs. We'll see. And then put a harness on him, you're gonna put a harness on him, and a leash, and you're gonna walk him. Oh my gosh. Okay, so right now, in the comments, before we even get started, and don't you cheat, I am gonna give this a 30% chance of it happening on any level. 30% they even get RJ out of the pond. I'm not helping, by the way. I'm not helping. So, okay, let me know in the comments, what is it? I say 30, over and under, you let me know what it is. So, go ahead, have at it, have fun. Okay. I'm gonna sit back and watch. Just don't get hurt because we don't. Uh, we didn't pay our workman's comp. Can thing. we tape his mouth? No, you're not taping his mouth. He's never had his mouth taped his whole life. See? He's not gonna start now. What's your plan? Oh, you're gonna get in. Good plan, good plan. Okay. Now you can grab his tail. Good, good job. Michael, you didn't do anything. Good work. Don't let him bite it. Will he? Well, yeah, we don't want him to hurt his teeth. Let's go this way, RJ. Come on. Yeah, We're gonna push him that way. <laughs> Mike, you're not doing anything. You're literally doing nothing. Okay, now's the time. Get over on this side. Get over on this side. Oh. Can you help us? No, I remember in the beginning when I said I'm not helping? Okay, Mike's going in. <laughs> these, guys, these guys are determined, man. This is great. If you can just hand it to me from the back. Yeah, you can be careful. Thank you, bro. I'll tell you when to back up. Noah, come on. You need help. No, we please help. If he comes back at you, you got to get away because he will come at you. Do you think these guys are going to be able to get RJ out? I said 30%. No, absolutely not. You expect your employees to be able to handle an animal? <laughs> I think you're going to get him out. I think that Mike is determined. I think Jay is 0%. Zero. zero. Absolutely. There you go. Now you got him. Wow, Mike! Woo! I'm all wet. I don't want to, I don't want you to pass him to make me scared. Okay. <laughs> you're not going to be able to... What do you want me to do now? You're going to pick him up. Okay. Oh, Jay's got him! Now we're going to go... Upstairs, right? Big boy. Watch out, gator coming through. Are going outside? Yep. Dad, is it okay we can go outside? Yeah, go outside. <laughs> I tell you what, guys, I give them a lot of credit. I said 30%, and they're out here now. It's a beautiful, warm day, sunny outside. RJ's probably going to love it. Now, getting the leash on, that's a whole other story. Give me that leash. Yeah, RJ! Jim, Jim. Jim. We did it! I'm not gonna let him go into the truck, man. You guys did it. I'm impressed. I never thought. <laughs> I, you, I tell you what, I might, I might turn the camera. Turn the camera. Yeah, Lori, I'll see you at that weightlifting challenge, baby. Yeah. Look at those little <laughs> at slim gyms. Those little slim gyms. What did you call it's them? A 22. Marshmallow. Yeah. Two, two marshmallow on vine. <laughs> Boom. Y'all wish y'all had these guns. So we're actually going to weigh RJ while we got him out. Looks like Jay is uh, stepping up to the plate. Yeah, You're because gonna have to Mike, get... Mike, move your food. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, uh, I think he's going to weigh... I'm going to be honest with you. I think he's going to weigh 95 pounds. No, that is not what you said. What you're, did I say? you're guessing low now because I, I guess low. What you I said say? like 100 and something. All right, I'll say 102. How's that sound? I'll go 102. I'm saying 93. I don't know, it's so hard because Bowser is only 83, but he feels like he's 100. Dude, but he's big. Can you just answer the question? No, yeah. I gotta think about it. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we didn't ask for a dissertation. We just asked for a guess. I'm gonna guess like right, <laughs> right at 100. 100? Okay. Zero it? Just zero. Just press it once. All right, we, uh, we're all between 93 and 100 and, what did I say, 103? Okay, here we go. 86. Seven, I knew he wasn't that heavy. Yeah, 87 pounds. So 87 pounds. I thought for sure he was over 100 pounds, but he's Just only 87 pounds. pounds. I know, he's almost the same size as So there you go. Now that you want to know how big is RJ, RJ, 87 pounds. There you go. Guys, I'm all swagged up. That's right. I have obviously joined the Reptile Army. And uh, by the way, reporting for duty. I hope you can go to reptilearmy.com. Join the movement, people. All kinds of cool stuff like backpacks, hats, all kinds of stuff like that. And more importantly, you are 
are part of the solution. You're going out there as our little foot soldiers, really getting people to love reptiles. So join reptilearmy.com. And as always, 10% of the proceeds go to US ARC and the other proceeds go to educating people about reptiles, reptilearmy.com. So a lot of people have asked, you know, where did I get RJ? How long have I had RJ? All those things. I actually got RJ when he was just a couple weeks old. It was actually a confiscation from a house that was not allowed to have it. And actually when he was just a couple weeks old, another alligator that he was in bit his leg off, believe it or not. And that's why he is three arms all the charm, right? I mean, he's absolutely amazing. And listen, it healed really well and he's done super good. I mean, he can climb, he can do all the things that normal alligators do. And I love this guy so much. So there's the story of RJ, and he will go into Reptarium 3.0, 4.0, something like that. He's gonna be on display so people can get up and close and actually interact him just like this. Cause I mean, let me tell you what, there is no cooler experience than messing with an alligator this size. Well, I gotta admit, I'm pretty impressed with you guys. Now, who really gets the credit though? I actually think that that was the most fair thing me and Mike has ever yeah. have ever done. That's About true. 50-50? 50-50. 50-50, you did carry him up. I appreciate that. So oh, RJ wait, had some- Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, so what, you're trying to say you think that Mike did more work just because he no. went in and got him out? Well, it was I a more dangerous I down, I was being nice. Oh, okay, I got ya. <laughs> well, you guys did good. I'm proud of you. And RJ got a little time outside in the sun. He loved it. Uh, he's, a, he's a rock star. So you guys did good. Seriously, I'm, I'm very impressed. I really am. See this? Magic, wow. magic, boom. Gone, not even flexing. <laughs> A little speedy update. My little boy here is doing really well. He's still here at BHB hanging out because it's just not been warm enough to let him out in the backyard yet. But finally, I think we're gonna get to a point where we can let him out here in the next week or so. And then he can be free for the summer. Basically what you don't want is the temperature to drop below 50 degrees at night. It's been like 30s and 40s at night here. But finally, the extended forecast looks like it's gonna be above 50s at night. So maybe if we can keep this going, we can actually bring him home and let him run around. Cause I know I love seeing him in the backyard every day when I'm home. Looks like Peach is the hypo hunter and Milk Snake has a nice beautiful shed right here. You guys know we always collect the sheds, but look at how beautiful this animal is. I mean, Hunter and Milk Snakes are incredible and Peaches is amazing with that hypo melanistic. I mean, that thing just looking rocking now that it has a fresh shed of skin. Absolutely wonderful. What are you doing, buddy? Hi. What are you doing, buddy? Whoop. Of course, this is my Aki monitor. I mean, look at how amazing they are. Whoop, he just ran right away. This is actually a red Aki. There's actually yellow Aki's too. These are dwarf monitors. That's as big as they get right there. And that thing is coming out like a little monkey. And believe it or not, we have this guy ball trained as well. So you can actually use a blue ball. He'll come up and eat. I mean, I tell you, monitors are so freaking dope. And python eggs and python eggs. That's right. We have another clutch right here. And this is actually a really nice pinstripe female. Really beautiful animal. Again, I love pinstripes. So I have a bunch of pinstripe females that I breed to different things but we always want to breed them to things that are going to produce awesome babies and in this case the male was this black pewter cypress ball python of course these were the ones of course that had those purple babies without hardly any pattern so of course i wanted to breed him to a couple of the same females this year let's see what mama has all right mama let's see what you have going on here okay uh oh not that great of a clutch, unfortunately, which is weird because this male actually has already fathered two other clutches that were 100% fertile. Gosh, I hate the fact that we're going back and forth this year on fertility, but all in all, it's still been a really good year. Again, a bunch of boob eggs, which I find interesting. This whole clutch was kind of, ooh, mama is all of a sudden mad at me. Okay, mom, but we got this right here. We've got two, four, five good eggs and two, four, five bad eggs. Oh gosh, I thought, whoa, mama, relax, girl. It's okay. Get these eggs out of here. We'll feed these off to some monitor lizards. They'll be happy about it. So 50% uh, fertility. Gosh, I tell you what, ups and downs of the year, but uh, overall still a good year. But every time you get a clutch of eggs like this, I'll be honest, even as long as I've been doing it, you start that your heart sinks. You're like, oh my gosh, these are gonna be fertility issues. But then we have tons of fertile clutches. So you know what? It's all gonna work out and these should still have some pretty awesome babies. You guys know that we've been experimenting with reptile fatheads. As a matter of fact, launching soon, reptilefatheads.com. Uh, obviously we have our first one here. We're gonna do some other ones, but I want to know down in the comments, what animals would you like to see a fat head like this? Salt, pepper, perdita. I mean, tell me what you want to see. What would you want to put on your wall? Again, these are kind of cool sticker type things. You can stick them on the wall. You can peel them off and put them somewhere else for sure too. So uh, they're kind of cool. You know, they work well. We're going to make them this size and then kind of half that size as well. So coming soon, reptilefatheads.com. You guys know I've been talking about black and white cow kings and how much I love them, but look at the pattern on this black and white cow king. I mean, it's so weird and so apparent. Usually you have 
striped or banded or high white or something like that. This one's just like dot dash, weird slashes, stuff like that. I love black and white Cal Kings. And like I said, I think they're really making a resurgence where people love them to death. And this one is super cool. You guys hear that? That's right, it's egg time, that's right. And what we have here is actually a Het Strawberry Sunkist that's bred to an annery that's Het for Strawberry Sunkist as well. So it has some potential for some pretty cool things with the Sunkist gene involved, the strawberry gene involved, the annery gene involved. Nice big female, good animal right there. We'll get mama all cleaned up, we'll get her some fresh water and look at that clutch right there. Hoo-hoo, doggy. I tell you, that's what, that's what I wake up in the morning for right here, guys. Look at this. I mean, just an absolutely gorgeous clutch, all stuck together. None of them rolled around. Mama did really good with this one. We've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15 beautiful eggs. And again, lots of different combinations with this particular breeding. Should be some really beautiful babies. Next clutch is actually a pretty good one. This is actually a Het Ghost Plasma, which is the Hypo Lavender Corn Snake. And it's actually bred to a Het Ghost Plasma. Plaza Scaleless, which is pretty absolutely incredible. Smaller girl, not a big clutch here, but some really beautiful eggs. And you can really see that sometimes the influence of particular genes can really change the color of corn snakes. This one's much dark, almost like a chocolatey color, where some are red, some are orange, stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. But nevertheless, she did lay a beautiful clutch of eggs. Not a ton of eggs, but still really nice big eggs, looking really good. And again, if we can get some of that, you know, ghost plasma, you know, oh my gosh, there's just so much stuff that could potentially come out of this. And then all ultimately scale us down the road. Unbelievable. Two, four, six, eight eggs. That's a great way to start. These are probably going to be some animals that we hold back because we want that scale as gene the next generation, right? So some of the stuff that we breed, we breed to sell. Some of the stuff we breed to keep back for next generation stuff. This is definitely a next generation breeding and it's going to be a banger. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did do me a favor, here is a playlist right over on this side. Click a video too. Helps me out a lot. I appreciate you. And as you're doing things for me, subscribe to the vlog channel right on this side. I really do love Love having you guys along on this journey. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.